Welcome back to the third and final video in this series. If you haven't checked out the previous two videos, I highly recommend doing so. I'll have links in the description. As a quick recap, I got this toy keyboard from Jade a while back and I wanted to see if it could be modified for a line-out jack so I could record the sounds the keyboard produces. Oh crap! What? The foil just came up! It doesn't look like all the buttons are working. Unfortunately, my soldering iron was too hot and the wires inside the ribbon cable connecting the buttons on the front panel broke. Wire actually broke off. It broke off. But no one gave up and after a few trials and errors, the modification was a success. So now that I have a line out jack on the back of the keyboard, let's see what I can do with it. Okay, here it is, the first Act Discovery keyboard, and if I tilt this over, you can see the modification done. So with that, let's go ahead and do a quick review of how well this works. Seeing as this doesn't have any kind of AC in, I'll have to put some fresh batteries in here. One ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh. two ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh. three ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh. four ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. Now, technically, I really don't have to put the screw back in, but you know, as a matter of completion, and because I don't want the batteries falling out while recording audio and causing the speakers to pop, I'll just go ahead and do it. Okay, so there is one little quirk about this keyboard. If I don't have anything plugged into the line out jack and turn on the keyboard, all you hear is a little power on jingle. But, if I connect an auxiliary cable into the back of it, and turn it back on with it connected to speakers, you can see and hear a buzz right before the power on jingle. Not that it affects anything, I'm just amused that there is a delay in the speaker output when you turn the keyboard on, but that delay is bypassed through the line out. So, there are four drum sounds. This one's kick, snare, hi-hat, and crash cymbal. The drum sounds are pretty good, and I'll show how to sample them a bit later. There are some built-in rhythms. This one is rock. And, of course, you can change the tempo to go faster or slower. This one is called new. Interesting. Disco. Which I'm sure is four on the floor. Which is very interesting. I don't remember any disco beats sounding like that before. Marching band. Pretty cool. Waltz. Yep, that's a 3-4. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Samba. Blues. And Slow Rock. That doesn't sound very slow. So let's go ahead and stop that. Now time to go through the instrument sounds. Default is going to be piano. Which doesn't really sound like a piano at all. It sounds very interesting. Yeah, 
Ah, uh, well, you get the point. Pipe organ, I'm assuming. Which sounds more like an accordion. But here we can actually do the full polyphony test. Hold down the highest note. Now let's find out how many notes can be pressed before that high note disappears. So four note polyphony. Okay, mandolin. Which sounds exactly like the piano, only it's being turned on and off very quickly. Now, music box. That's actually not bad. That's definitely a sound I can use. Trumpet. Which doesn't sound like a trumpet. It sounds brassy, but okay. Acoustic guitar. The problem is there isn't any long decay, so it doesn't sound natural like a plucked string should sound. Violin. Which sounds okay. Finally, Bell. Not too bad. Maybe add a little bit of reverb and delay. So there are four drum instruments and... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight instrument sounds, with some rhythms included. Um, this actually reminds me of another keyboard I have. Actually, when I first got this keyboard, this one I'm about to show you is exactly what came to my mind. That's the Casio SK-1. Size comparison-wise, you can see the Discovery keyboard is slightly bigger. But how do these keyboards compare? Well, you have eight sounds. There are some rhythms you can select. But this keyboard right here is from 1985. It's also a sampler, so it has a light input and a mic input. You can sample, set a loop for that sample, it also has a synthesizing function, so you can create your own sound using harmonic synthesis. What about the built-in sounds? Well, this has a piano. This has trumpet. Pipe organ. Let's see. The Discovery keyboard does not have a flute, but the SK-1 does. The SK-1 has some synth drums and another type of organ called a jazz organ. So the sounds are slightly different. Um, let's actually compare the sounds. I know the ones on here are sampled from a real instrument, where I believe the sounds on here are synthesized samples. So let's check it out. The SK-1 can run off batteries, and it can run off of one of these, an AC adapter. Let's turn it on. Okay, so this is piano. This is trumpet. Pipe organ. And why not? These are synth drums. 
since the SK-1 doesn't have individual drums that can be triggered like the Discovery keyboard. The sounds are very different, so like I said, these sounds are sampled from real instruments and the other ones are synthesized samples. So now that we know how the sounds are created and what sounds are being produced, the question now becomes what can I do with those sounds? Well, I'm going to show you. That little keyboard does have some really interesting sounds even though they don't sound anything like what they are supposed to. It still can be used with a little bit of effects, EQ, some other techniques I've learned over the years, and a little imagination. So let's get started with that. So now that I have this back here and set up, the first thing I want to do is sample the drums. How am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to load up Audacity on the computer. This is a really nice sound recorder and editor, by the way. I'm going to go ahead and hit record, then I'm going to hit the individual drum sounds slowly so I can get a really good sample of each. So here is the kick drum. Oops, I guess it helps when the keyboard is on. Okay, so now I'm going to hit the bass drum. Snare. Hi-hat. And finally, crash cymbal. Okay, I can stop the recording. If you notice, the sounds are really low in volume. That's okay. In fact, when you are doing digital sampling or recording, you want the sounds to be a bit low. It's only when you are recording to tape or other analog media that you want to record the sounds as close to 0 dB as you can get. Anyway, after that little tidbit, let's get rid of the beginning of the recording since we don't need it. Just highlight and delete. Now with Audacity, you can remove any noise or hiss from any recording you make by highlighting an empty spot and selecting Noise Reduction. Click on Noise Profile so the program knows what frequencies you want reduced, then hit Ctrl A on your keyboard to select the whole recording, and reselect Noise Reduction. I normally keep the default settings and hit OK. Audacity will reduce the noise in the recording so you won't have any annoying hissing without distorting the sounds you want. So let's check for any noise. Nothing, and that's a really nice snare sample. Now I'm going to zoom into the kick drum sample and remove the empty space before the sample. There we go. Just highlight and delete. Now to check to make sure I didn't delete too much and cause the speakers to pop. Okay, now I want to select the kick drum. I think I can reduce the selection a bit. There we go, and copy it into a new project. Now I want to amplify the sound to negative 0.1. Now when I test it, you can hear the sound has been amplified, but doesn't clip or peak above 0 dB. Now I can select a little bit of the empty space and fade it out to 0, just in case the sound somehow got cut off. If you leave it, then you might hear a bit of a pop in the speakers as they go from vibrating to a standstill in an instant. That sounds pretty good. So I'll do that three more times for each of the different drum sounds. Incidentally, the same process is done for any instrument I capture using Audacity or from the DAW I use. So now that I have all four drum sounds sampled, I can now compose and record the song. With each instrument you see, I will put up information about what sounds that instrument made along with how much I paid for that instrument versus how much that instrument is worth as of this recording. Hopefully this will show that you don't need fancy, ultra-expensive synthesizers and keyboards to make music. So I hope you enjoy!